الحمد لله رب العالمين قيوم السماوات والأرضين أدبر الخلائق أجمعين باعث الرسل صلوات الله وسلامه عليهم أجمعين إلى المكلفين لهدايتهم وبيان شرائع الدين بالدلائل القطعية وواضحات البراحين أحمده سبحانه وتعالى على جميع نيمه وأسأله المزيد من فضله وكرمه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الواحد القهار الكريم الغفار وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وحبيبه وخليله أبدل المخلوقين المكرم بالقرآن المعززة المستمرة على تعاقب السنين وبالسنن المستنيرة للمسترشدين سيدنا محمد المخصوص بجوامع الكلم وسماحة الدين صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى سائر النبيين والمرسلين وآله وصحب ومن ولا بعد يقول الله عز وجل في محكم تنزيله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء اتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويكفل لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله صدق الله المولانا العظيم وثنك الله سبحانه وتعالى the one and only creator فاطر السماوات والأرض the one who originated the heavens and the earth for the blessings of Islam for being here this afternoon and insha'Allah to remind ourselves of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to know so that what we are doing as Muslims that is okay we will embark upon that with much enthusiasm and alacrity whatever we're doing that is not okay we will determine to stop it because whatever you do each and every person in this room today will have audience one day with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Brothers and sisters in Islam, I have chosen to, spoke, to speak on the topic of what? Lying in Islam. Because in my years of traveling, many of you might have known me before when we started programs on Metro TV. Uh, many of you might have heard me on the radio debating people on, on the topic of Islam. I travel to the United States and I've been traveling around. What I have noticed among Muslims today is the fact that there are some ahadith that circulate that Muslims can lie. And therefore, when you talk about the issue of being truthful in our lives, a Muslim tells you the Prophet says it is okay to lie, therefore it is okay to lie a little bit. I am truly surprised that Muslims will say this, because as a Muslim, your catch word is truthfulness, sincerity. You see, Many people lie today, and it has caused the Ummah so much. It has caused relationships so much. It has break, broken homes in our families. It has caused dissension among family members. It has broken brothers who love one another so much just because of little bits of lying here and lying there. And we say, no, it's just a white lie. There's no problem for you to lie a little bit. In Islam, Lying a little bit is not accepted. Lying is completely poo-pooed in Islam. It is abhorred by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet hates lying and encourages the Muslims to avoid lying in their day-to-day -day activities, in their conventionalities, in their relationships, in whatever situation they find themselves, they should avoid lying. People lie to keep relationships. People lie so they can have their brothers not angry with them. People lie so that their friends will not get mad at them. Because they believe that if they tell a lie, they support their friend. Even if what they're doing is wrong. And they cannot say you're doing what is wrong. If they lie to their friends and support them, they've done something that will keep the friendship intact. But believe me, in Islam, lying is seriously bad. And when the Prophet migrated to Medina, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and for the first time he met the group that lied to him that they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but truly they never believed and they faked their, their belief in Islam 
and they tricked the Prophet into believing that they were good Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet that they were all liars. And Allah told the Prophet that they were called the Munafiqun. And Allah promised them in Surah Al-Baqarah, Quran chapter 2, verse 10, Allah says, Fi marad. There is a sickness in their heart. Allah increases their sickness. Right? وَلَهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يكذبون. For the very fact that they lie, Allah will give them a chastisement that they cannot stand. They will have a woeful punishment for the fact that they lie. Indicating that if Allah hated that so fact, so much that He says, He will punish them for the lie they were lying. The Prophet ﷺ warned Muslims not to lie. Even in issues that we talk about halal and haram, that people will say this is, this is permissible, this is, inter, this is prohibited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah An Nahl, that is Quran chapter 16, verse 116. وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تَصِفُ أَلْسِنَتُكُمُ الْكَذِبَةِ And do not say it concerning the, the, the lies your tongues fabricate. Subhanallah, هَذَا حَلَالٌ وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ This is halal, this is haram. لِتَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَةِ So that you can fabricate a lie unto Allah. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ لَا يُسْلَحُونَ As for anyone who fabricates a lie unto Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they will never prosper, not in this dunya, nor in the hereafter. Therefore, lying is not okay for a Muslim. And we say, why is it not okay for a Muslim? Because when a person lies to you, or a person lies to a group, or a person lies to someone, there are five things that is implicated in the lying. Five things are implicated. First, when you lie to someone, you mock the integrity of that person. He is such a fool that when you lie to him, he believes your fib. You see, you're mocking the person's integrity, right? Your interlocutor, the person you're talking to. You're mocking the integrity because you think he's a fool. When you say a lie, he's going to believe it. And Allah has told us in Quran chapter 49, that is Surah Al-Hujrat, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin asa an yakunu khayran minhum, wa la nisa'un min nisa, asa an yakunna khayran minhum. You hear Allah is telling us that we should not mock each other. So believers, no man shall mock any group of men, no women mocking women. It is not accepted in the deen. But when you lie to a friend, the first thing you've done to them is you've mocked them. And Allah has told them not to do that. Number two, when you lie to someone, you have belittled their integrity. Or he said, yo, yo, I'll tell him a story and he'll believe it. You leave me alone with him. And you tell him a story and he believes I didn't tell you. He's so smart. You belittle his integrity. And didn't the Prophet tell us not to? Didn't the Prophet tell the Muslims not to belittle no one? When he was talking to the brothers about Ukhuwa in Islam, brotherhood in Islam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says we shouldn't do that. He says, Al-Muslim akhul Muslim. The Muslim is a brother to another Muslim. La yadlimu, you don't wrong him. Wa la yakhzulu, you don't leave him in the lurch. Wa la yadlibu, you don't lie to him. Wa la yahqiru, and you don't belittle him. Then he touched his heart and said, At-taqwa ha huna, wa yushiru ila sadrihi thalatha marrat. While hitting his chest three times, the husband written in a shirt. It is all evil. And yahkid akhahu al-Muslim for you to belittle or mock, belittle your brother Muslim or your sister Muslim. Therefore, we are told not to belittle one another. Don't belittle one another. So don't tell a lie to your brother when he believes it. You tell the other brother, he doesn't have the brain. He says, small person, he doesn't understand. You belittle someone, the Prophet says it's wrong. Number three. When you lie to somebody, subhanallah, and the person gets to know it, that all the time what, he's, you've been, what you've been telling him is just a fib. What you've been telling him is just a lie. He believes everything you say, and in the end he realizes that it's not right. Doesn't it hurt? It really hurts. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man aadha jarah, whoever hurts its neighbor, faqad aadhani, the person has hurt me. Wa man aadhani, faqad aadha Allah. If you hurt me, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then you have attempted to hurt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, why do we then lie? This is just three I have given you. Number four, إِنَّهُ لَظُلْمِ It is wrongdoing to lie to your brother, to lie to your sister, to lie to your wife all the time, and you think it's just a little lie. It is wrong, it is dhulm. And wronging one another in Islam is not permissible, it's not accepted. In fact, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, 
he gave us that hadith al-Qudsi to tell the Muslims to live as brothers. He says, Ya ibadi, O oh my worshippers, Inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi. I have made wronging people on myself interdicted. That is prohibited. I will not wrong anyone. وَجَعَلْتُهُ بَيْنَكُمْ مُحَرَّمًا And I made it amongst you something that is what? Prohibited to wrong one another. فَلَا تَظَالَمُوا Therefore do not wrong one another. Don't wrong your brother. If you lie to your brother, lie to your sister, lie to someone and lie to someone and they find out that you're lying to them, it hurts, it is wrong to do that to another Muslim brother. You see, finally, when you lie to a Muslim brother, you lie to someone, you destroy what we call the Akhuwatul Islamiyyah, the Islamic Brotherhood. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in one of the beautiful ahadith that he left to us. He says, Man amal nas whoever interacts with people, falam yadlimhum, and will not wrong them. Wa haddathahum, falam yadzibhum, and he speaks with them and doesn't lie to them. Wa wa'adahum, falam yukhlifhum, and he promises them and he does not breach his promise. That person is a person of what? Accomplished personality. Zaharat adalatu of manifest justice. Wajabat ukhwatu, a person we should take as a brother. This is serious. Therefore, if the person talks to you and they lie, they promise you and they breach their promise, it's a person you cannot take as a brother in Islam. So this lying destroys the Islamic brotherhood. Now let us ask ourselves. Why is it that the Prophet tells us this question? He says, Kaburat khianatan. It is a great, great deception. And to hadith akhata haditha. That you talk to your brother, say something to your brother or your sister. Huwa laka bihi musaddaq. He believes everything you're saying. Wa anta lahu bihi kadib. But all what you're saying is a lie. It is wrong in Islam. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set aside three things for people who lie. If you lie in Islam, there are three rewards that you get. And a lot of people don't realize this, but it is in the Quran. Number one, when a person lies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he does not believe in the Quran. And if you don't believe in the Quran, then you are a kafir, you are a disbeliever. And where do we see this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Nahl, chapter 16, verse 105, Allah says, إِنَّمَا يَفْتَرِ الْكَذِبَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ Indeed, they, those who fabricate lies are those who do not believe in the ayahs of Allah, in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَاذِبُونَ These are the obsessive, compulsive liars. See how it is? So if you lie to people and you think it is just a joke, I, mean, I have to say a little thing, it's, it's, it's nothing. I just lied a little bit, it's, it's, it's nothing. Allah says you don't believe in the Quran. And if you don't believe in the Quran, then you are not a Muslim. In fact, there are people who lie and they say that, oh, okay, it's just a white lie, it's a little lie. I just didn't mean to, but it's just a little lie. You know, one day, Asma bint Yazid, radiallahu ta'ala anha, she came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, in qalat ihdana li shay'in tuhibbu. أو تشتهيه إن قالت إحدانا لشيء تشتهيه لا أشتهيه أيعد ذلك كذبا If one of us likes something يا رسول الله But when they ask you do you like it I say oh no I don't like it Is that considered a lie? فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم The messenger of Allah May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him said الكذب يكتب كذبا A lie is written down by the angels as a lie They don't write it as a truth the angels write down your lie as a lie. Hatta al kuzayba, even the small lie, took tabu kuzaybatan. It is written down as a small lie. So whatever the lie is, Allah will not change your lie to be a truth. If it's a small lie, the angels write it down. You lied, but a small lie. If it is a big one, it's a big one. And we said, if you lie, Allah doesn't consider you. Consider you who? A Muslim. You don't believe in Allah. He says, "Innama yafdal al-kaziba, al-ladina la yu'minuna bi ayat Allah, wa ulaika hum al-kazibun." Indeed, those who fabricate lies are those who don't believe in the Quran, and these are the obsessive, compulsive liars. This is number one. Allah doesn't consider you a Muslim. Number two, when you lie, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on the day of judgment 
will not look at you, will not speak with you, will not purify you, and you will have a painful punishment. Where did we see this? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day told us that salasatun la yukallimhum Allahu yam al-qiyamah There are three people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not talk to them on the day of judgment. La yuzakkihim He will not purify them. Wala yadhur ilayhim Will not even look at them. Walahum ma'adhabun alim And they will have a woeful punishment. Who are these? He says Rajulun halafa ala sil'ah Lakad a'ta biha aksara bimma utiya wa huwa kathib a man who is doing business and when you come to buy from him you give him 200 Ghana cities and he says Wallahi I paid more than this Wallahi I paid more than this Wahua Kadib and he's lying he said the, the money you're giving me I even paid more but you see because I know you as my brother you okay you give it to me but I pay more than this Wallahi the moment he says Wallah Allah mocks him he lied in business Allah says on the day of judgment Allah will not look at him. He will not speak with him. He will not purify him. And there will be bad punishment for this person. Who is the second one? Rajulun halafa ala yaminin kathimin ba'd al-asr liyakta bihi ma'ala rajulin akhar. A person who after asr, and I like the hadith because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says after asr, indicating that it is at the end of the day when our deeds will be raised to Allah. This man swears to another Muslim because he wants to take his money. He wants to trick him to get some money from him. And he is lying. Rajulun halafa ala yameenin kathib. Yameenin kathib. That is what? A thick lie. Ah, wallahi, wallahi, I need this. Wallahi, they said this. And they give you the money. Liyakta bihi mala rajulin akhar. So that you can get somebody's money, you swear, after asr, at the end of the day, when your deeds will be taken to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will leave the number three because it doesn't concern the topic I'm talking about. So you see that, number one, when you lie, Allah doesn't consider us as, as a Muslim. Number two, when you lie, Allah will not really what, look at you on the day of judgment and you will be punished just for lying. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Ana za'imu baytin fil jannah. Ana za'imu baytin fil jannah. I will be the leader of a house in the middle of paradise. لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْكَذِبُ وَلَوْ كَانَ مَازِحًا For the person who avoids lying, even if he's joking. You see some people joke, and in the joke they lie. He says, I will be أَنَا زَعِيمُ بَيْتٍ فِي الْوِفِي وَسَةِ الْجَنَّةِ I will be the leader of a house in the middle of paradise. For the person who avoids lying, even if the lie is a joke. He says, no, the Prophet says, I shouldn't lie. So he avoids lying in his joke. One day, the Sahaba Ridwanullah Ta'ala alayhim came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said to him, Ya Rasulullah, ayakunu al-mu'minu kathaba jabbanan? Ya Rasulullah, ayakunu al-mu'minu jabbanan? Can the believer be a coward? Qala na'am, a believer can be a coward. Faqalu Ya Rasulullah, ayakunu al-mu'minu, can a believer Ayakunu kazaban? Can a believer be what? A liar? Kala la yakunu mu'minu kazaban. A believer cannot lie. But he can be a coward. He can be anything. But he cannot do what? Lie. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like lying. Our brothers and sisters in Islam, I don't mean to scare you. But I'm being honest and faithful and frank with you. Wallahi al azim. For your brother to look at you and tell you, look, what you're doing is not okay, is better than him lying to you and supporting you in whatever you're doing so that he will gain your brotherhood. You see, I told you there are three things that we get when we lie. First, we said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take you as a believer. We think it's a small lie. Allah doesn't consider you as a, as a, what, a believer. Number two, on the day of judgment, you have a problem with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, punishment. What is number three? We saw number three in the dream of the Prophet. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a dream in which he was led by two angels to a place like hellfire. They showed him so many, many things. But in the end part of the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, ثُمَّ أَتَيْنَا عَلَى رَجُلٍ مُتَّجِعٍ لِكَفَاهِ 
Then we came upon a man lying on his back. وَآخَرَ قَائِمٌ عَلَيْهِ بِكَلُّوبٍ مِنْ حَدِيدٍ And there was another man standing upon this man holding metal pincers. You know pincers? That's the things you use, the pincers we call them. We call it kalub in Arabic. Huh? Kalub min hadid. Metal pincers. Yushab shiru shitqahu ila kafah. He was pu- pushing the pincers into the side of his mouth and pulling it all the way to that, the nape of the neck. Wa min kharahu ila kafah. The part of his nose, he would put the metal there and pulling it all the way to the back. Wa aynahu ila kafah. And the side of the eye, all the way to the back. And this man was screaming, a scream that the Prophet said, I have never heard a screaming like this before. Then when he finishes pulling the meat out of the face of the person, he moves to the other side, and that's, وَيَفْعَلُ بِهِ مِثْلَ مَا فَعْلَ فِي جَانِبِ الْأَوَّلِ And he would do it the second side, the second place, also pulling it. وَمَا أَنْ يَنْتَحِيَ مِنْ هَذَا مِنْ جَانِبِ الْأَوَّلِ when he finishes doing that, it goes back again. And he does this side, and he goes back again. And he was screaming. The Prophet said, Hatta to Subhanallah. I said, Glory be to God. Man hadha. Who is this man that you're punishing this seriously? You're taking all the meat from his face and pulling it all the way to his back. And then took him to the other side and pulling it all the way to his back. What has this man done so that you can punish him this much? They said, let's go, let's go. At the end, they said, الرجل, The man that we were doing this to him, he was a man. When he leaves house in the morning, He lie, lies, that rich what? The heavens, the skies. Because of the lion, the angels are taking his... <laughs> they're taking the face off. So brothers and sisters in Islam, now if this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown the Prophet to show us, that once you lie, this out, the things you go through. And one of the hadiths of the Prophet وسلم, when he was talking about, he talked about so many things. And the last part he says, وَشِرَارُ أُمَّتِي And the worst of my people, الَّذِينَ وُلِدُوا فِي الطَّرْفِ وَغُضُوا بِهِ Those who are born in affluence and opulence, and they are nourished and enriched by it. يَأْكُلُونَ طَيِّبَ طعام. They eat the best food. وَيَلْبَسُونَ لَيِّنَ الثِّيَابِ They wear the best clothes. وَإِذَا تَكَلَّمُوا لَمْ يَسْدُقُوا But when they speak, they don't say the truth. When they speak, they don't say the truth. Therefore, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم has warned us. Let us avoid lying, little ones, major ones, medium ones, whatever the size is. Because when you lie, it destroys your relationship. That is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Unsur akhaka, valiman aw madluma. Help your brother if he's the wrongdoer or is the one who is receiving the wrongdoing. Then the Sahaba ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi said to him, Ya Rasulullah, Ansuruhu idha kana madluman. Ara'ayta idha kana, Afa ra'ayta idha kana madluman. Fakif ansuruhu. Ansuruhu idha kana madluman. I can help my brother if he's been hurt, someone is doing something bad to him. If he is the one who is hurting someone, how can I help my brother if he is the one actually hurting people? You prevent your brother from hurting people. You tell him in his face, if you have to hold him, hold your brother. Take him away from hurting people, lying to people, doing things that people don't do, people don't want. And this is helping your brother because if you don't do that on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you as what? A person who aided and abetted that which is wrong. You saw it and you never did anything about it. Let us remember to be truthful to one another. We don't have time. I would have spoken a little bit about truthfulness. But let us be truthful to one another. Wallahi al-azim, it doesn't cost anything. A man came to me and said to me, I, I don't know what is happening to my wife. Since we married, we're very happy. Now we don't have any relationship anymore. I told him, do you like little lies? He says, sometimes. I'm at the gas station and I tell her, oh, I'm so close to the house. And it takes 20 minutes to come home. And when you come home, she knows that. You told her you were five minutes away, but you came 20 minutes back. You see, when you keep doing this, it grows and it destroys the relationship. It erodes affection in the relationship. You used to say, darling, I love you so much. 
After a while, when you say darling, she says, you, what is darling? She doesn't affect, accept your darling anymore. Because the little lies you think is nothing, it's growing up to be something great to destroy your relationship. It erodes affection, number one. It strains communication. When you start to talk to your wife, all you do is argue and argue and argue because of our little lies that we think is nothing. It sustains blame. All the time you did this. What you did is wrong. And all the time when you come home, you don't feel comfortable in your relationship. Let us avoid lying. It is not good in anything. And there's no time that you lie. That is okay. If Allah hates it, let us hate it. Because if we are truthful, we will grow together. Because this ummah is a strong ummah. But the problem is with the Muslims. We are not practicing the deen the way it should be practiced. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to practice this deen the way it should be practiced. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us inshallah faith that is iman be entrenched in our heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us health, vigor and vitality so we can worship him better. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us money so we can spend for his sake. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our children. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring peace and harmony in our homes. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lead this country, inshallah, in places that are better. Because we have the vice president, inshallah, here, and we acknowledge the fact, inshallah, that is here. And we, we take this opportunity to pray that the country, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lead this country to what makes this country the leader of Africa, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imbue them with wisdom. So they can lead this country with all the things that is needed to make this country progress. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support them in their ways to make this country better. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help this country to grow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally, when it is time for him to call us, inshallah, we ask Allah to call us as righteous servants and to join us with the righteous in the highest places in Firdaus. Rabbana ya Rabbana taqabbal mina naka ta sami'u alim wa tuba alina maulana naka ta tawabu rahim. Allahumma rabbana ahdina fi man hadayt ahdayt wa afina fi man afayt. وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تغض بالحق ولا يعيد عليك إنه لا يذل مواليك ولا يعز من آديت تبارك ربنا وتعاليت لك الشكر على ما أعطيت ولك الحمد على ما قضيت نستكفرك اللهم ونتوب إليك لبيك ربنا وسعديك والخير كله في يديك نحن دائما وأبدا نتوب إليك فلا ملجأ من مشاكل الدنيا والآخرة إلا إليك أسلمنا أنفسنا إليك ووجحنا وجوحنا جميعا إليك وفوضنا أمورنا كلها إليك ربنا رحبة ورغبة إليك ها نحن تمثلنا بين يديك علمنا أنه لا غفران ولا رجوع إلا إليك فأغفر وقد حوائجنا بين يديك فأغفر وقد حوائجنا بين يديك فأغفر لنا وقد حوائجنا بين يديك فإن الخير كله يا ربنا في يديك إباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعد والعد ويسان ويتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبج يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون قوموا لصلاتكم